Hi Health Dimensions, welcome back to our Mod 2 of Feeding Assistant Training. You're going to need your packet, a highlighter, and a pencil. Okay, now that you guys have all the supplies that you need, we are looking at page 5. If you guys flipped ahead and saw how big Module 2 is, you'll see that there is not enough time for me to get in everything that I would like to in 10 minutes. So this video is going to be a lot of prompting you to do some reading. So what I'm going to have you guys do is read a paragraph a piece out loud. So I would like the person in the front row, left hand side to begin. I'm going to have you read the top paragraph and then the next person behind you is going to read the next paragraph and so on until you read the entire front page of page five. A couple of areas that I would like you to highlight under nutritional needs, I would like you to highlight. We do not need as many calories as we did in our younger years. We do not need as many calories as we did in our younger years. That's under nutritional needs. That means as we get older, we don't eat as much. We don't need as much food. I would also like you guys to look under fluid needs. And I would like you to highlight. People need approximately six to eight cups of water or other fluids every day. It's down here. Six to eight cups. If you flip the page over to page six, where at the top it says module two, nutrition, hydration, and therapeutic diets, it should say thirst decreases in the older population. Whoever left off, can you begin reading? So the next person, begin reading. Each person can read a paragraph and then pass it off to the next person. Read that entire page out loud. You guys have just read over page six. It talked a little bit about thirst and dehydration. I'd like you to add a couple of notes in here. So dehydration was talking about how they can experience thirst and fatigue and weakness, ultimately death. death. And it says at the bottom that it's um, we need to be aware of signs of dehydration. I would like you guys to discuss for a second what do you think are a couple of signs of dehydration. Jot down some of your ideas along the column and then turn to your partner, discuss it for a second, and then I'm going to give you a list on the next page some of the common signs of dehydration. A couple more pages that I would like you guys to read. So page seven, conditions that increase risks of dehydration. Continue to read through that page over to page eight where it says weight loss, pressure ulcers, and then stop right up here where it says uh, nutrition and weight loss and pressure ulcers and it has a couple of lines there. That's where I'd like you to stop. You guys should have stopped right where the lines are. It says under there, uh, these are approaches for weight loss and pressure ulcers that might be used in this facility. So we're going to talk specifically about the New York State Vets Home right now because that is the facility that we'll be working with this year. So some approaches that they use are nourishments throughout the day. If you're in my morning class, you guys will have a chance to pass nourishment and feed residents during that time. So nourishment could mean um, boost or ensure. I can't remember which one they use there. Um, but essentially, it's high in carbs, high in protein, and has um, a significant amount of calories for what it is to help um, their nutritional needs. They also have um, special diets that we're going to be going through in a completely different video because that's quite lengthy. But that is the biggest one, is adding in supplementation um, to their normal meals. So I had said earlier in Mod 1 that we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner occurring at pretty much the same time every single day. Well, in between those meals, we add in supplements. So if there's, say, uh, we worked with a resident last year who was 100 years old. Actually, I think she was 101. She was a very, very picky, very light eater and she just didn't have much of an appetite 
a majority of her calories came from those supplements in between. And believe it or not, it really works because she has no pressure ulcers, no signs of skin integrity issues. She honestly was very healthy for a 101 year old resident. So we had a chance to uh, feed her a lot and she would um, take in a significant amount of calories during those supplements. So make sure you add that there. Supplements in between meals. Right now we're at the top of page 10. We're looking at the importance of therapeutic diets. Whoever left off reading, can you pick up and read one paragraph and then we're going to pass it around. Each person read a paragraph. It should start out with, there is a relationship between nutrition and disease. At the bottom of page 10, there is something that I'd like you to highlight. It says it is still very important that therapeutic diets are served when there is a doctor's order. We're gonna talk quite a lot about doctor's orders during this unit, so that's the first place you're seeing it. So it's really important that you guys understand in a nursing home, every single diet that is prescribed to the resident is a result from a doctor's orders and a collaboration between people. Nursing, speech therapy, and the doctor have to come together to come up with that diet order. So it's very important that it is followed.